Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you today. And we welcome you. Some of you we haven't been able to see in worship for a long, long time. And it's just really good to see you today. And we are continuing for just a little while longer with our mask. If you're comfortable with that, we appreciate you honoring that during our time together. And our numbers are down to what now, Miss D? 6.7, okay, and they still need to be down to five. And just so you know, Wise County, which is, what, less than an hour from here, is the highest uh, rate in the entire state. So it's still very strong, raging in certain pockets. So we're trying to be safe, okay? And uh, hopefully by Palm Sunday, which is two weeks from today, maybe we can take it all off. How's that? How would that be? Okay. <laughs> Jimmy says, okay. Uh, we're not recording this, are we? Oh, we are? Okay. Okay. All right, Jimmy, thank you. It's good to see all of you again. Like I said, Marlene, it's good to see you back there. Long time no see. Debbie, Kevin, Janice, long time no see. And I forgot your name. Scott, yeah. Scott, it's good to see you. And the rest of you all were here last week. But it's real, and Todd, it's good to see you. Okay, it's just good to be in the house of worship today. It, how many of you saw snow this morning? Yeah, you saw the snow? And uh, it's March, okay? So, it's, it's, it is March. All right, Miss D, are you okay today? Good, okay. Well, we're ready to begin our worship service, I believe, and uh, we'd like to take just a moment and pray and uh, we do have some prayer requests we prayed last week for uh, Trish Weaver Miss D's colleague in the ASL interpret interpreting she is showing improvement they have determined the cause of the stroke and she is doing better and on the way to a full recovery which may take some time but we praise God for that and so we do remember her in our prayers today. Ronnie James came by just a few moments ago and needed a prescription filled. And so we continue doing what we do at Shades of Grace uh, when these doors are open. And uh, does anybody else have a request for prayer by the lifting of your hand? Uh, Miss Janice has some health issues going on, so we want to pray for, for Janice today. All right, anybody else? Laura. Okay. Laura's family, father and stepmother. Thank you, Laura. God bless you. Okay. Well, Steve is sitting back there, and I'm going to ask him to come today and give us our opening prayer and uh, just praise God for an opportunity to be in worship one more time. Before each service, you know, try to get in the office and, and 
prayed before the service, and I'm sure this has happened to a lot of us that, you know, you start praying and you just, you can't find the words, but I'm so thankful that we serve a wonderful God who knows our heart, knows our mind, and uh, sits at the right hand of the Father for us. Uh, that way, when my bumbling prayers don't come out like I want them to, somebody's there to got my back, you know. Let's pray. Lord, Father God, we thank you so much uh, that we're able to come together, Lord, to honor, to praise, to serve and glorify you. Uh, I ask a special blessing on Pastor Will today. I know you've given him the perfect message, Lord, and uh, we just thank you for this time. Uh, Father, you've done so much for us. You've blessed us in so many ways, just that we have the freedom to come here and praise and serve you openly. And Lord, uh, let us never take it for granted what you have done for us, Father. Bless this service, bless this place, and please continue your hedge of protection around us. In Jesus' most wonderful name, and everyone says, Amen. Okay, good to see Tim. And we do need to remember Mark also, our guitar player who is at the VA uh, hospital and has been for several weeks, but we're looking forward to the day when he can come back and worship with us and be a part of our music once again. We're going to begin today by doing a song. Uh, this is an old, old hymn that was on my heart and mind. He hideth my soul, a wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. And you may not know the words, but just listen to them today. Hey. 
and I hope that you will claim that as your promise today. Even though I missed a word or two, God is all we ever need in life. Landon, are you ready to share some music with us, you and Tim? Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away. next song is it's called the rising of the sun and it talks about uh, about the resurrection of Jesus and then it goes into the next verse it talks about when Jesus comes back and we're resurrected listen to the song and the message and the hope in this song and kind of prepare our hearts for the the Easter season that's coming up Easter morning, as the sun began to rise, Mary went to find him. She found to her surprise the tomb where they had laid him was just an empty grave. All the power that was in him brought him up from the grave. Son of God, oh, he's coming back for me. The cry is getting louder, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Well, I can help but get excited. It's the rising of the sun. Many of our loved ones who've left to take a place, why, they'll be there to greet us on that resurrection day. So, Lord Jesus, come. Well, I can help but get excited. It's the rising of the sun. Over the horizon, look, friends, can't you see? Is that the Son of God? Oh, he's coming back for me. The cry is getting louder. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. Well, I can help but get excited. It's the rising of the sun. All 
All right, we um, want to sing the doxology. We haven't done this for quite a while, but we want to offer thanks to God for everything. You know, the Bible says, and everything give thanks for this. The giving of thanks is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So you've been sitting for a little while. If you would like to stand, you can. You don't have to. But if you'd like to stand, sing it with me today. seated and just kind of look toward your neighbor and nod and say it's good to see you today and it is really so good to see each one of you in worship today. I guess from the music you um, realize that we're nearing the season of Easter just by listening to some of the music today. I believe two weeks from now will be Palm Sunday and then the following weekend will be Easter. Now, we traditionally at Shades of Grace have always met on the Sunday afternoons, but coming out of the pandemic and doing our recordings for our large congregation on Sunday afternoon on the internet, this seems to be the way God is leading us. So we worship here on Saturdays, then we have several thousand people who join us on the internet around the world in many places on Sunday afternoon. So I appreciate you for uh, supporting this new way of doing things. And I believe, uh, as I was telling Steve this week, how many of you know that if you do something as little as three times, it becomes a habit? Did you know that? And if so if you make a habit of worshiping on Saturday morning and coming together with us, pretty soon it'll be the normal thing to do and just won't think anything about it. And... Um, you know, after all, uh, technically, if you look into the, the scriptures of the Hebrew Bible, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Of course, the Christians in the early centuries after Jesus resurrected from the dead on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, uh, adopted that day as a day of worship. But the Apostle Paul says, do not esteem any day above another. No Sabbaths, no new moons. Uh, Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. So Sabbath simply means rest. And so we're glad that God gives us this opportunity to come together to worship, to find rest for our weary soul, and to find strength for the journey. And I believe that just coming together makes all the difference in the world. We've gone for so many months now uh, not being able to gather in ways that we used to but I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be back together again. And if you're really grateful from wherever you are today, will you give a hearty amen? Amen. amen. All right. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures from the Old Testament book of Psalms 41, and then I'm going to read a New Testament reading from the Gospel of Luke. But I read this earlier this week from Psalm 41, and I saw something that I had not seen in all the years of reading the Psalms and studying the Scriptures. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But how many of you remember last week, if you were here or if you were online, uh, can tell me what the three spiritual practices are that we celebrate during these 40 days of Lent leading up to Easter. Does anybody remember what those three things are, Lori? Prayer, Prayer, fasting, and alms. Those are the three things that Christians focus upon during these 40 days. And we talked a lot about prayer, fasting, and alms, which is giving to the needy and the poor. And so this week, if you receive my phone tree message, and by the way, if you do not receive it, we'd love to give it to you. Seven days a week, 
It's an automated message that I do. It comes out to you. There's no charge whatsoever, but it gives you all the information that's going on here at Shades of Grace online and in person. But this was my devotion one morning just a few days ago, and it says blessed, and remember the Old Testament word for blessed means happy, right? So blessed are those who consider the poor, the Lord delivers them in the day of trouble. And as I thought about that, I'd always thought, well, yeah, the Lord delivers the poor in their day of trouble. But as I reread that and meditated upon it this week, I realized that the blessing of happiness is upon those who consider the poor and upon those people God will send his deliverance and his salvation. So as we who at Shades of Grace now for almost eight years seek to especially minister to and with the last least lost and lonely of our city and now by virtual means all around the world, uh, we seek to do what Jesus said that all Christians ought to do. And that is to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to heal the sick. We just had one of our young men from the street came by earlier before the service. That's why I was on the phone, um, who had a very severe infection, just got out of the hospital and needed a prescription. And so we heal the sick even today by the means of modern medication and blessings that God has set before us. And so we do all of these things to lift up the name of Jesus and to be a Christian witness in the world. But as we continue reading this psalm, it says, The Lord protects them and keeps them alive, and they are called blessed in the land. They will be called blessed, happy in the land. Are you happy today? We used to sing a little song, If You're Happy and You Know It. Remember that? What's, it, what's part of it say? Clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Okay. So if you're happy today and you know it, say happy. Say it one more time. Oh, that sounded so good. We got to say it one more time for the people online today that are listening. Happy. happy. All right. And so uh, that's the Old Testament scripture that I have read and in just a minute, I'm going to read a New Testament scripture that goes along with our lectionary series of Lent that leads us up to Easter. But a couple of things were on my heart as I prepared for this service today. And uh, one of those is if you walk down the alleyway behind Shades of Grace, uh, there's some tall buildings that are brick, and there's a lot of graffiti on those uh, walls. But one that really strikes me that I've read every time I walk by there for the last year, that someone walking in the alley had, uh, had written on there. And by the way, some of the folks in the streets are very artistic. I mean, they've really got some abilities. And, uh, but this question, and I, I think about that so often, someone had, had written on the wall, what is this world coming to? You know, and apparently uh, that's on all of our hearts and minds as we think about what's going on in the Ukraine right now. And I don't like watching the news. It disturbs me. It troubles me. But we need to be aware of what's happening in our world so that we know how to pray and how to ask for God to guide our lives and to direct us into the spiritual ways that God would have us to go. And so, um, I don't know if you've been watching this, but one thing that really touched my heart in the news this week was all of the children, the orphans who were already without families, who were already without parents, who are wandering and who are sojourning, and some of them have walked for several hundred miles, they've hitchhiked, they've rode trains, they've done whatever they could to get there and they interviewed one 15 year old boy and it just uh, my heart just went out and I realized that is representative of just multiplied hundreds of thousands of people in the world that are in trouble today 
and you know the people that are just being displaced, cast out, cast aside, and forgotten. And um, that troubles my heart today. And we need to pray for the Ukraine and all the places in the world that is war-torn and that are war-torn today. And then as I left here yesterday uh, afternoon to go home, as I locked the back door to get into my car, which is also back near the alley, there was a person uh, lying uh, covered in a blanket and sleeping in the doorway, in the back doorway of our church. And it seems like as we make progress in life, um, we understand that sometimes people are getting off the streets and we do so very much here in helping people not only get off the streets, but also to avoid being in the streets. As I've told you before, uh, we give a substantial amount of money to KCMC, to folks who are needing their rent paid, who have an eviction notice, who need to have electricity kept on and water. But beyond that, we help folks every day of the week who are sleeping in their cars, people who are sleeping on the outside. And one problem that we have in our world today is the lack of sustainable, affordable housing. There are new houses going up all over around us. I mean, it, that's the news, if you know anything, is look at all the new houses that are being built. But then the next question is, where are the people who can afford those kinds of houses? Because we seem to deal an awful lot with the folks who can't. And so we have a long way to go in our city and in our world to try to make a difference, but we are making a difference. And I want you to understand that as being a part of this ministry, whether you're here for the very first time or whether you're here for eight years or whether you're tuning in on uh, YouTube or Facebook for the very first time, that you are making a difference by just helping people be aware that there are needs in our world. And Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. And it, it's a revolving door. It's a continual stream because even though we can help get someone into a house or into an apartment, there is someone else coming along right behind them who have just been evicted or who have just has just become homeless or who is on the verge of homelessness. And so it's a never-ending journey of life. And I know that for each of us, life is, is an adventure, to say the least. It really is. You know, Jesus said, we do not know what a day will bring forth. We make plans. The psalm writer said, man devises plans in his heart, but the Lord brings them to pass. And I saw a little thing one day on Facebook that it showed, um, it, it said, this is how I plan my life to be. And it was a straight line all the way across. But then he said, this is how it really turned out to be. And it was just a great big knotted knot of lines and uh, circles and, you know, just uh, an impossible situation. Now, how many of you realize that that is kind of how life is, right? I mean, it really is. It's so unpredictable. And we just don't know. And we have a member of our congregation, by the way, that I need to, to mention. Um, you would know her, but um, she lives in an apartment. But a pressure canner blew up on her a number of weeks ago, and she was burnt severely. And uh, she called again yesterday and had to go back to the emergency room in an ambulance because of the blisters and the bleeding just cannot be healed and so we have all of these kinds of things going on in our lives, even if we're blessed to have a house to live in or as Landon sings, shoes on our feet and food on our table. But think about the other 97 or 98 percent of people in the world who would trade everything they own just to have what you have today. The very least of us have more than what most of the world today enjoys. Did you realize that? We take so much for granted. And during this season of Lent, as we think about prayer and fasting and almsgiving, we try to have a renewed focus 
on what can I give back to the Lord? The psalmist in the Old Testament asked a question, what can I render unto the Lord for his benefits to me? Have you ever thought about that? People say, well, you know, I'm just one person. I can't do much, or what can I do? But we can all pray. And I was walking through here today before the doors were opened, and I said, Lord, guide me today in what I say and in my thoughts and in my actions. And I prayed out loud the Lord's Prayer as I walked around this building. And I want you to say it with me today as I say a verse then I want you to say it after me, and I'm going to say it with you again. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, right here, right now, where I am, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now I want to pause there for just a minute because what I felt this morning as I walked, again, this is not a self-centered prayer. It's not, Lord, give me today what I need. But notice it said, give us. We are community. We are together. When one of us suffers, we all suffer. That's how it needs to be. And if you're living somehow in a bubble or you're not in a situation that you can feel empathy and uh, sincere, heartfelt grace and mercy for those who are less fortunate, then I guess then we all need to move a little bit closer to the cross as we think about the sacrifices that Jesus made during these 40 days of Lent as he was led in the wilderness or driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. Remember that? And there he was tempted in every point of temptation that man could ever face. And when you think about that for just a moment, what, and I don't want you to answer it out loud, but just think about it. What to you would be the worst temptation that you have faced? Don't, don't answer it out loud. Just, I want you to just acknowledge it in your heart. And how many times have you beat yourself up over that? How many times have you felt unworthy or far away from God because of just a temptation that you may have had in your mind or your heart? And yet the Bible says God in the person of Jesus faced every temptation and that includes what you just answered in your heart today. That very thing that you feel down and out and like you think God could never help me or forgive me or, or whatever through this, Jesus felt that very same thing. If you believe the scriptures, that's what the scripture says, he was tempted in every point. But the only thing that made it different in the life of Jesus is that as God, as humanity, the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, we call him Emmanuel, he is without sin. He, he would face those temptations, but he resisted them and overcame them. And the way he overcame them was by using the scriptures that were already written in the Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the Lord's mouth. So when we're faced with those things that we don't know how to deal with, begin that prayer, begin that Lord's prayer, and just stop right there and say, Lord, I know I'm not the only one that's feeling this way. There's probably millions who are feeling this way. And that's why Jesus said, give us, give us the community Give us what we need for today. And our problem is we often get our eyes on the future and on tomorrow and we worry about that bill that has to be paid tomorrow or, you know, the eviction notice that we found on the door or the repossession notice on our car or whatever. 
and we get so caught up in looking ahead that we forget to have faith in the here and now. And if you look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it talks about a now faith. Not a yesterday faith, but a, he says now faith is, right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that you cannot see. We need faith right now, right? We need hope right now. Our world needs hope. Our world needs mercy. And you and I who claim to be people of faith need to show mercy. Sadly, I've witnessed it over and over and I'm sure it's happened in my life a time or two and maybe hundreds of times or two that uh, I feel like I don't want to give that much mercy to somebody for whatever reason. And then I realize God extended way much more mercy to me than what is expected of me in the world. Can the church say amen today? Isn't that true? You know, someone said we as Christians often like to give, we want to give just a little spoonful of mercy to somebody. But when our time of trouble comes, we want God to pour a gallon upon us, right? Isn't that how life goes? But Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. Forgive us. See, we all are in that same situation. Somebody said, you may not all be in the same boat. Have you ever heard that old cliche? We're all in the same boat. And I've used that all my life. But the reality is we are all in the same storms of life. Really, we're in the same storm or the same kinds of storms. And Jesus always shows up walking in the storms. One time they saw him and they cried out, it's a spirit, it's a ghost. And he said, it is I. Be not afraid. Jesus is always near. So whatever you're going through today, whatever you desire in your heart, I'm here to tell you that God is a God of miracles. God is a God of abundance. God is a God of forgiveness and mercy. He's plenteous in mercy. His mercies are new every morning. Every morning. You don't ever have to worry about running out of mercy because God gives us enough mercy today to last us through this entire day. And when the clock strikes midnight, guess what? He dumps out another innumerable measure of mercy. Well, I guess more than we realize we're even going to need. But blessed are the merciful. Happy are those who show mercy. That's what the word blessed means. Happy are those who show mercy. And so Jesus says, forgive us our trespasses on one condition. What is it? Thank you. I heard it all over the house. As we forgive others. See, it's not the preacher that has to forgive. Yes, the preacher does forgive. Right, Pastor Michelle? Any other preachers in the house? But it's not just the preacher. It's not just the lay leader. It's not just the deacon. It's not just the musician. But who is it, as the song says? Me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So it's all of us together and he says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. One little boy had been in uh, Sunday school only a very few times, and he didn't know the scriptures, and he was learning some of the Bible for the first time. And he went home, and his grandma asked him, you know, what did you learn about today? And he said, well, one thing is that the preacher said, I have to forgive my trash passers. Anybody been passing trash on you? Kind of what they say, running their mouth on you? <laughs> you ever heard that? Anybody been saying bad things that aren't true? You know, kind of 
putting down your reputation, kind of talking bad things about you. That, that's who I think of as the little boy said, the trash passer. But just say, pass it on by. Miss D, pass it on by, right? Let it go. Move it on. Uh, but really and truthfully, those who trespass against us. And that happens in so many ways. And I want to read just a few scriptures with you today uh, because our lectionary reading is from the 15th chapter of Luke. And Landon, I know you just did this last week, but before we leave today, I want you to do He Came Looking for Me because this really fits into this message. And I'm going to wind this up. I'm not going to be much longer, okay? Um, I'm not going to drag this out. Um, hopefully. But this whole 15th chapter of Luke, Jesus is talking and teaching about things and people who are lost. Things that are lost. I know what, a few weeks ago somebody walked in the building here during the week. Who was it? Had lost keys. Who was that that lost their keys in the building? Bill back there had lost his keys and they searched the building over and they looked outside and we looked for a long time, just searched the place over. You know that old song? I searched the world over and thought I'd found true love. You remember that? Well, they searched the place over looking for those keys and finally somebody said, we need to stop and pray. You know, pray God. Was it you? Steve said, Steve walked in and said, Lord, find those keys and he walked straight over here and right there in the middle of the floor under a chair, there were the keys. Had been walked around and around and around and around. <laughs> That's just life. Jesus teaches about things that are lost. And he talks about the lost sheep. You ever felt like the lost sheep? You ever felt like the black sheep of your family? You ever been there and done that? Or maybe in school or sports or whatever. Now, that happens in life. Jesus understands that too. He went through that. The Bible says he was despised and rejected of men. I mean, they didn't like Jesus. They did everything they could to make life tough, but he kept on keeping on. Then Jesus talks about the lost silver, the coin that had been lost. And then he gave that beautiful story of the prodigal son. But that's a subtitle, The Prodigal Son, that begins in verse 11, could easily be titled, The Loving Father. You know, something that broke my heart that, that I've been thinking about this week, uh, a young man who comes to our doors who is homeless, he struggles, he's in and out of incarceration, and he just has issues that he can't seem to, to handle, and he can't. And I, something that's really been haunting me the last few days, I remember all the way back before the pandemic, whenever we had a lot of people in the building here, and you know how it always was, and we had a phone right over here, and it was a community phone that anybody could use. And I was over there one day doing something, and I think Charlotte was working at the desk at that time, and the young man was on the phone, and he asked me to dial a number because uh, it turns out that he told me later that when he gets mail here at the community mailbox that he can't read. But he, we helped him dial home, and I remember he called, and all I heard was this side of the conversation. Hey, Daddy. And he gave his name. It's me. He said, Daddy, can I come home? And in just a moment, he hung the phone up and walked away. And I talked with him later. And uh, he doesn't live that far from here, just in a, a neighboring county. It's where he grew up. Now he wanders the streets of Kingsport. But his daddy apparently said, nope, can't come home. No place for you here. That's the reality of the world in which we live. We're a broken world. Landon also sings the song, What do we do with broken things except throw them away? But thanks be to God, He doesn't throw us away. Amen. 
He just takes the clay and remolds it and remakes it and restores it to his image. But this is the story of the prodigal son. And I'm not going to read all the verses. You can read them in verse 15. But a certain man had two boys. And you know the story. One of them, the younger one, he wanted what was coming to him. His father obliged and gave him his inheritance. And the young man went off to a far country. You ever been in the far country? You may be in the far country today listening to my words. You know, you can be uh, living in a nice house and around good people and you can still feel that you're in a very far country. You can seem so far away from what is good and right and pure and holy for your life. You can just feel like something is missing and I can't put it back together again. But this young man found himself in a far country and man, he had so much money in his pocket and uh, he had a good, came from a good home, a good family reputation. But in the far country, it didn't take very long for him to be in need. The Bible says he spent everything he had in riotous. Now that sounds a whole lot like righteous. But it's about the opposite of righteous. Riotous living means pretty bad stuff. I mean, he just wasted it away, having a good time, he thought. How many of you know the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death? We were looking at a video that Jimmy pulled up of one of our services, and we're going to run this in about two weeks during Holy Week. By the way, last this past week we ran one of our Lenten revival services with Pastor Billy Bird. If you didn't get to see it, Pastor Billy's in heaven now, but that was five years ago. You can go on to our page or to YouTube and you could watch that sermon from right here at Shades of Grace five years ago about the cross. But uh, anyway, uh, the stories don't always end up in the way that we think we would want them to. And uh, this young man on the video, and you might remember him, it was, I don't know the exact date, was, that was during Lent also, wasn't it? Or was it Palm Sunday, yeah, which is two weeks from today, or tomorrow, actually two weeks from tomorrow. You that are viewing this, it's two weeks from today. But this young man used to be here, he was homeless, he was a triple amputee, his legs were both off way above his knees, and his one arm was off right above the elbow. That was his right hand that was missing, and he had one arm. And he was baptized here on Palm Sunday that year, along with some other people. The other young man with him was named Tim, and then we hadn't seen Tim in years. I mean, it'd probably been four years or five, and just about four or five months ago, we were locking the door, getting ready to go home one afternoon. And as I unlocked the door, there stood Tim, and I just recognized him. And I even remembered his name. And he had been in the streets, had been homeless, had walked the streets. But he, and he himself was from a neighboring county as well, not far from here. But he said, Pastor Will, I had to be in town today. I just want you to know that life is going good for me. I have a car. I have a home. I'm working every day. And he said, I wanted to come by here and say thank you to Shades of Grace for what you all have done to help me. He said, I couldn't have gotten there. Do you remember Tim, Steve? We remember him. He was baptized. He reminded me in that video. He was baptized the same day the young man Robert was, who was the triple amputee. And um, Robert wanted to share a testimony but he was so broken up, he said, I just can't talk. But the essence is he had asked me to share with the people. He said, bad choices put me in this wheelchair. Bad choices got me where I am. Didn't he? he wasn't even 40, was he? Maybe he was shot, had been shot 13 times. His body was riddled. He was in a gang, and that's what happened. And he was at the mercy of of uh, others who would be kind to him. But here at Shades of Grace, he found mercy. He found someone who cared. He found people who loved him. 
and he was baptized on that Palm Sunday. And we're going to share that with you uh, in about two weeks, you who follow us on social media. We're doing a lot of blasts from the past and memories. You know, these past two years have been hard on us with the pandemic and not being able to do a lot of things as we always had done. But thanks be to God, I believe that the best days are yet in front of us. I really believe that as shades of grace. I believe that with all my heart and soul. I bear witness with that today, that our best days are yet to come. Because this young man, he was down as low as he could get, and he did not know that the best days were yet to come in his life. But he got down in there, he got so low, he was looking around in the mud of the pig pen, trying to find a kernel of corn. Maybe find an old, dirty, muddy corn cob with just a kernel of corn. And that's what he had for supper, Kevin. Think about it. And he began to think. The Bible says he came to himself. And he said, things have got to be better back home where I came from, he said. I'm just going to, he couldn't pick up the phone and call. He couldn't do email. He was too far away to send up a smoke signal. But he said, I'm going to go back home and I'm going to look up my dad and I'm going to just see if I can't live in the barn, maybe sleep in the barn loft and do some work as a hired servant. But I want to go home again. And you know the story. He made his way back home. But the Bible says while he was a long way off, Maybe he was afraid to go home. Maybe he was afraid of the message, just like the young man I told you who was on this phone and he wanted to go home and he wasn't allowed to go home. And um, maybe this young man had just stopped and thought, I don't know if it's worth it one more time. But while he was a long way off, his daddy came running toward him. That's what God does for us. That's what we celebrate during this season of Lent is to remember that God loves us enough to find us wherever we are, wherever we are. You know, the psalmist one time said, I was in a horrible pit. You ever been in that horrible pit? You ever been in there so bad you didn't think you could ever see daylight again? But he said, God lifted me out. Thank God for the day that God lifted us out. And he talked to his dad and his dad said, son, I never stopped loving you. You're still my son. I forgive you. And he called the servants to kill the fatted calf and to throw a party. For this is my son who was lost. All of us here today, I look at faces of you whom I love and people whom I've known. Some of you for a number of years now. Some of you for eight years. Some of you only for recent days. But we all need to hear that message because we have loved ones who are far away in the far country. And maybe we're the only ones that will be able to share mercy. Now, that's a fine line. It goes into a whole different sermon that I can't go into today for the lack of time. Because there's a whole lot of tough love mixed in with the mercy. But just remember today that God came looking for you. God came looking for me. Listen to these words today. One night fly alone, life's raging sea. It looked as if I would suffer defeat as the blackness of night closed off the light. My heart sank with fear My desperate cries rang out with fright All I could see 
was no hope inside with faith all but gone I met the one who came looking for me he came looking for me he came looking for me he made a way but there was no way that I could see Rescue my soul and calm all my fears. Now I'm safe from all harm. Since I met the one who came looking for me. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan was to fall and put me away. I drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time, but Jesus appeared, said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm. Boy, he walked through the storm. He came looking for me. was near to rescue my soul and calm all my fears. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. Now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. that the Good Shepherd came looking for you. Will you say, praise the Lord? Praise say it one more time. And loud enough for everybody, wherever they are, on YouTube and Facebook to hear you. Say it. All right. I believe we mean that today, don't you? I'm so, so glad that you've joined us today for worship. I hope that your heart has been encouraged challenged and drawn closer to the Lord. Now, if you need prayer today for any reason, if you've got something on your heart and you need us to talk to you, we've got Pastor Michelle back there. We've got Steve over here. We've got myself. And then we've got other people that I'll draft if I need to, to pray with you, okay? But if you need prayer, if you need help, if you need some hope today, see one of us. We'll take the time and we'll minister to you. We'll talk to you will point you in the right direction, okay? God bless you, and we just pray that... Landon, give us one great big hallelujah roll there. Go in peace in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.